Hey, welcome to the next video. We're getting close to the end of our application in uh, Firebase. We have created a, a system now so that when we click an edit button, we can go ahead and change the attributes of our hero, and then we're going to uh, click a save button at the bottom. We've got a few things to do though, because um, first of all, when we click this button, we don't want to create a new hero. We want to update an existing hero. And to, to update a, uh, an existing hero, we have to have the hero's ID. Let's go take a peek in our console where our data is being stored. So I've got these um, different heroes that I've made. And you notice that each of them have a unique ID, even though they might have the same name, like Gandalf has a different ID because of his timestamp. When we create a hero, it doesn't matter if it existed or not. We're just going to create it and put it in the database. When we edit an item in the database, we have to find the original and then replace it. So what we're missing from our edit form is this ID number. We have to get that so that way we uh, overwrite the original data. Okay, so let's go find the uh, place where we're creating this edit button. So remember the place where we're creating all the HTML code? How could you forget that? Let's go and we're going to add a new field. So you can see you can have things called data target, data toggle. You can actually call data anything. And we're going to call this uh, hero ID equals. And then we're going to programmatically uh, put in the person's ID. So this is person.id. How do we pass this edit? ID into a f into a form. We don't really want the ID to show up on the form. So in our um, edit form, we're going to create a hidden field. So I'm looking up here at the modal, the edit modal. Let's create a new input. So we're going to use this same pattern. Instead of saying text, we're going to say type is hidden. And the name is going to, or the ID is going to be called hero ID and it doesn't need a placeholder because it's invisible. However, it, it, it is going to have a value. So we can set the value of this hidden form and reuse it later. Now I'm coming back down to here where we did all the form setting up uh, last video. So we need to take the uh, first item off the list and we're gonna call it the uh, hero ID. And that is going to be this button's um, data attribute. So let's see if we're actually getting any data from this like we want. So I'm going to check it with a console log and I'm going to say uh, you click the edit button for and then we're going to put in the um, hero ID to see if actually that corresponds to what we expect. So let's refresh our browser and look at the code again. So let's go look at Gary. Let's click his edit button. And it says you click the edit button for, and it did actually show his ID. So that's that's good. So this form now has a hidden field in it. It's hidden, you can't see it. But we can use it when we go to update the uh, data in our database. A couple things we better do. Uh, we better take off this title and change the name of this button. Those are misleading. So I'm scrolling to the top of the page, and we're saying edit this hero. And where does it say create a new hero? So create a new hero needs to go. And the button at the bottom, it says create new hero. We're going to say update this hero. How about? OK, let's check to see if that looks good. I'm going to save it and refresh. And let's do an edit button. There, it says edit this hero and update this hero. OK, so now we're ready to program this update button. OK, so we know that we've uh, got this hero ID. We're going to put that into the hidden field. So let's change the hidden field value. Okay, so let's go back into our button that says uh, when we press the uh, submit button, we want to make sure that the ID of our hero is not a new ID. We're not going to create a new hero. We're going to take the existing one. So let's get rid of this date. We don't need to add a new date, but we do need to say the hero ID field. That's the hidden field. Whatever its value is, is going to be the same one um, that we're going to update. We're going to use the same function at the bottom, add hero to database. So if it sees that there's an existing data, it just overwrites the one that's already there. So let's save our work. So I've got this uh, guy named Jim in my database. He's an elf and he's an armorer. Let's edit his data. Let's give him a higher strength than the rest of these guys. And let's change him from an elf to a cyclops and make him a deity. Update the hero. 
So I got to close this modal box. It doesn't close automatically, but if I close it here, you can see that the changes are being made. So it looks like our database is updated properly. Now, as far as closing that modal, there's a class that I forgot to put in. So Bootstrap wants us to add something called data dismiss, and that is a modal value. So putting that in there automatically it triggers the modal to close. So let's refresh it, test it out. Okay, we're gonna edit Jim. We're gonna update something on him. And then click update this hero and it does close. And it looks like it's updating this as well. We're going to find an error in our code. I have Donald Trump created. He's an orc and an armorer. If I were to edit him, I can just change one thing and choose the update and I will have a strange behavior. Suddenly there are two Donald Trumps. We had the original orc and now I have the updated Cyclops. So instead of changing one of them it created a second copy of him. Let's go back and look in our database to see what's going on. This is the original Donald Trump. He has the ID that is constructed like everybody else. The space in his name is what is causing the error. So when I edit Donald Trump, it is only knowing the first part of his ID number. Let's go see where that happens. So I'm back into my page. I'm going to look at the edit button and the HTML code behind it. So I'm going to switch in my console from the console tab to elements. Element shows all of the HTML code that is currently loaded on the page. Chrome has a nice button here in the corner called Select an Element that allows you to zoom in to an element on the page. If you use a browser that doesn't have this button, you can still find the element. You just have to go scroll through and look for it. So I want to go over here and look at the Edit button behind the original Donald Trump. Over here on the uh, console, we can see that in the Elements page, we have an error down here. Hero ID or the data hero ID says Donald quotation marks and then you can see the rest of the ID was left out and it is not in the quotation marks. So what I need to do is fix my code so that this quotation mark is automatically placed around everything even though it has a space in it. So here's how we do that. Let's go to the Visual Studio Code Editor and I'm going to the HTML updater for this section. Down here on line 435, I see I have this data hero ID. I have a quotation that ends the string and begins the next string. I simply need to have a quotation, single quote, and another single quote. And that will surround the entire person ID. So let's save this and retest our work. So I'm going to go back into the database I'm going to delete this Donald Trump that is a fraud, the single named Donald. And then I'm going to go back into Hero Maker and try to edit him again. Okay, I'm going to refresh the page. And now I'm going to try to edit Donald Trump the orc. So I click on Edit Me. Let's change his race to an elf and his profession to a ferreter. And let's click Update this hero. So now Donald Trump is only an elf. There is no orcs around here. If I look in the database, Donald Trump is the only one there. And it appears that my code is working now. Let's go back into the uh, HTML code. So elements, select an element, and the edit button. Now when I look at the hero ID, I can see that there's a quotation mark at the beginning and the end of his ID, even though there was a space in there. So that by far is the most complicated part of our project so far. Uh, getting data updated is more difficult than creating and deleting data. And that'll happen in every application that you create.